This time we're going to talk about the definite integral again, but this time we're going to talk about signed area. So I sort of alluded to the fact that the definite integral is the area under the curve, but then I kind of went, oh, but sort of, kind of, maybe not. So let me show you an example that demonstrates what I mean. So this is a function you should be familiar with, f of x equals sine x. Starts at zero, moves up, down, and gets to two pi, and then repeats again. Now this shaded area is the stuff I want to find. I want to find the area here and here. Now, what I told you about definite integrals before is if you want to find the area between a function and the x-axis, all you need to do, let me put it here, area equals the definite integral between 2 pi and this point here, which is 0, of sine x with respect to x. So, quickly jumping through it, open a bracket, the derivative of sine, sorry, the integral of sine is uh, negative cos x, and we're working between 2 pi and 0. And next steps here are to sub 2 pi in for our x, and then subtract subbing 0 in for our x. So now we should know that cos 2 pi is 1, so negative of cos 2 pi is negative 1. And then we're subtracting uh, cos of 0 or negative cos of 0. So cos of 0 is 1, so that's uh, negative 1. So now we have negative 1 minus minus 1, which is plus 1, which is 0. I started this whole thing by trying to find the area here and here, this shaded area, and my answer is zero units squared. Which is, of course, nonsense because I can see area here, so there's some amount, some amount greater than zero. So my thing that I've done has let me down. Why has this definite integral let me down? It's because of signed area. Simply put, any area above the x-axis, or between the function and the top of the x-axis, is going to be positive. Any area underneath the x-axis is going to be negative. So if I had done, and this is what I should have done, if I wanted to find that actual area, I should have done the integral between this point and this point. and 0 of sine x with respect to x. Now if I'd done that, I would have got an, that, that area here, just the top part, and that would have been an answer of 2. I'll just tell you that. You can do the calculation, but I'm telling you, it would have been 2. Now, you, can, you should remember that a sine curve is kind of symmetrical here, so the area of that is also 2. But if I were to do from 2 pi to pi, of sine x with respect to x, which is what we'd expect to happen, we wouldn't get the answer of 2. We'd actually get an answer of negative 2. Because area in this case is signed. This is a positive area because it's above the x-axis. This is a negative area because it's below the x-axis. Now, um, if, if I want to get the right answer, I can still do this, but the sign I put here, because that's going to spit out a negative area, I need to put in a negative. So what I'm really doing is adding two areas. I'm adding a positive area to a negative area. And to do that, I've got to subtract one from the other. There is an alternative method that I could have used to sort of combat this signed area thing. So I could have said, all right, let's find the area of the top half, pi to zero, sine x with respect to x. Um, let's find the area of this bottom bit. But let's do something tricky so that we don't get an answer of negative 2, we get an answer of 2. What we can do is take the terminals and reverse them. If we take the terminals and reverse them, it's not going to give us an answer of negative 2 anymore, it's going to give us an answer of positive 2. So pi, 2 pi. The reason reversing the terminals works is because you're subbing the pi into your bracket first, and then you're subtracting the higher number 2 pi, which 
turns everything around and eventually makes that negative into a positive. That means that we can just add the areas directly because we flipped it in here. Um, so that's how signed area works. The definite integral is going to give you a negative if the curve's below, a positive if the curve's above. And as you've seen here, if you do the definite integral from here to here, where some of it's below and some of it's above, then they're going to cancel each other out in some way. This is an extreme case where they've cancelled each other out completely, but if you had a function that looked more like like that, and you were finding this and this, if you took the definite integral from here to here, you can see that there's more stuff on the bottom than there is on the top. So you'd get a negative answer. The negative answer would be less than if you'd added this number to this number, because they're cancelling each other out in some way. Alright, so if there is some above and some below, you've got no choice, you've got to split them up. Let's do the bit that's above the curve, let's do the bit that's below the curve. So just, just as a little bit of extra terminology here, your textbook uses this sort of terminology quite a bit. If you uh, find the definite integral between 2 pi and 0, just, just like I did when I started, your textbook will call that the definite integral, or it might also call it the signed area. Definite integral. It will also call it the signed area. If, however, your textbook wants to do what most people would want to do, which is find the actual area of stuff, they don't talk about signed area, they just talk about area. Find the area between the x-axis and the curve between 0 and 2 pi. So these bits of working here would have found you the area, which of course, in this case, is equal to 4. So just be cautious in your textbook. Signed area means I don't care if it's top or bottom, I'm just going to go nuts. Area means I'm going to have to think harder about this, I'm going to have to figure out what's above, figure out what's below, and then break it up appropriately.